Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and it's time for a standard budget good pirate deck. We have a number of pirate decks coming out this week, but this one is particularly important because while it is budget, it's also super aggressive, has a bunch of disruption, and is actually good. We're going to talk build, strategy, sideboarding, and upgrades for those of you who want to take it to the next level. Throughout the video, we'll be using TCG Player pricing so you can see just how cheap it is, and if you want to see the deck list in full or purchase any of it, you can do that by clicking the first link in the description. I do hope you enjoy this pirate deck tech, and if you do, remember to hit that like button helps out a lot. Turns out pirates are actually pretty friggin' good in Ixalan. We'll begin with the bottom of our curve, a full playset of Siren Storm Tamer. The first pirate, the first available creature to attack, the first piece of disruption, the Storm Tamer gives us everything we want, early drop has evasion, and ultimately protects our more important pirates from removal annoyances. It isn't too flashy, it isn't Mausoleum Wanderer, but it certainly is the best pirate version of that card we're gonna get. In an extremely aggressive deck like this, having the ability to disrupt opponents without tapping mana is critically important. Storm Tamer is a true staple here. Moving up to the 2-drop slot, we're going to continue with the Disruption Party. A playset of Kite Sail Freebooter easily makes the main deck. Being a 1-2 two for 2 isn't going to make anyone shake in their boots, but this is the second creature in a row with flying, and it grabs an important spell from your opponent when it enters the battlefield, which means that your opponent will either have to use removal on it or kill it in combat, neither of which are particularly advantageous or sometimes even possible, especially when this little scamp flies. Another small, annoying pirate to get in your opponent's face and mess with their rhythm. While many pirates have disruptive tendencies, not all of them do. Skyship Plunder is a solid two power flying pirate. It may not seem like much, just like the other pirates, but being able to attack in on turn three for two is huge, especially in the air. Now we did go back and forth between this and Stormfleet Aerialist, but to put it as simply as possible, this is always a two power flyer, and that's what we're looking for, consistency. The Plunder brings that, and while the ability isn't going to become that much of a factor in this initial build, if you stay tuned to the end, the upgrade section, the Plunder becomes a star. Fathom Fleet Captain, a full playset. This is where the explosiveness really gets started. In addition to having Menace himself, he creates pirate tokens that also have Menace, and all you need to do is pay two mana and just have another non-token pirate. That isn't going to be hard to do with the swarm of little pirates we're running. Think about what we've brought together so far. Each pirate has evasion, either in the form of flying or menace. The Fleet Captain is a renewable source of menacing pirates as long as he stays alive. We'll get to that in a bit, but he's someone you want your Storm Tamer to keep alive, that's for certain. Moving up our curve, we keep seeing increased aggression. We're running a full playset of Ruin Raider, the most aggressive Dark Confidant ever. Drops as a three power creature, has no evasion of its own, but that rate trigger is going to refuel your hand and in an aggressive deck, that's everything. Also, since your curve and this is super low, you never really have to worry about the rate trigger killing you. Get multiple Ruin Raiders out? Ruthless. They attack early, often, and bring a lot of value with them. It's kind of the perfect three drop. Our other 3-drop isn't technically a creature, but I'm putting it with the creatures. Fell Flagship, the Pirate Tribal Vehicle. Even without crewing it, all your pirates get a nice plus 1 power boost, giving tons more value to your evasive army. 2-2s two become 3-2s, 1-2s become 2-2s, two and they have flying. The Flagship is a stellar tribal card for us, and with a single pirate token or ruin raider, the ship can barrel in itself. Now, it doesn't have evasion, but that trigger can be particularly savage. Forcing a discard on a successful attack, that adds up, especially since you're already pressuring your opponents. This is a form of hand attack. Between this and your freebooter, you have that hand disruption game on lock, but again, the real value here is that nice power boost because you weren't already hitting in for a bunch anyways. Now the top of our creature curve goes to Hostage Taker. What a beautiful card. Now remember, this was already eroded. It exiles target artifact or creature other than itself, so you can't end the game right there by blinking it forever and causing a draw. But that doesn't stop this human pirate from being a great curve topper. Hostage Taker is a piece of removal disguised as a pirate. It gets rid of the most dangerous blocker on the table. You can then play that card if you want, and it weakens their defenses for your pirate crew's inevitable pillaging. Since she's also a pirate, she gets the buff from the flagship, and she helps trigger your fathom captain, so more synergies there. The Hostage Taker is another tempo ruining card for your opponent. It is disruption. At every turn, you're trying to mess with their plan. The Storm Tamer, the Freebooter, the Flagship, Hostage Taker, this is what you do. The only thing more hilarious than this is that your spells only help to enable you more. It's so awesome. 
The rest of the non-lands in the deck are designed to stop our pirates from dying, keep more pirates coming, and kill anything that moves. For disruption, we're running Lookout's Dispersal and Sensor. Lookout's Dispersal is just a better mana leak in this deck. I couldn't even count on one hand the amount of times I had to pay three for this, barely ever. The deck runs 23 pirates, including a pirate that makes other pirates. The Dispersal is almost always live, and no one is playing something you can't counter with it. By the time they have four extra mana to pay for something, they're either dead or you let them live way too long. And while Sensor isn't nearly as impactful as Lookout's Dispersal, it functions similarly in the early game, staving off early removal. See, many of the decks you'll be up against are a tad slower than you, and they'll use their removal early to stem bleeding. Sensor stops those measures. In late game, when you don't need it anymore, just cycle it away. Best of both worlds. Early disruption, late game cycling. The deck wouldn't be complete without some removal, and a full place at a walk the plank is exactly what the doctor ordered. Merfolk aren't exactly plentiful or on standard right now, so that non-Merfolk clause, not a huge issue. Walk the plank is easy to cast, it gets most anything we hate out of the way, pretty straightforward. This along with Hostage Taker makes for some sweet removal. The last non-land card in the deck is Chart a Course. We're going to need to refuel our hand at some point, when every card either messes with your opponent or produces pirates. Yeah, you're going to need refueling, and Chart a Course is a two-mana divination. You have to discard a card if you don't attack with a creature beforehand, but I mean, come on, have you met this deck? Chart a Course is live most of the time, two mana for two cards, even at sorcery speed. Thank you very much, I'll take that all day. What an absurdly easy requirement. The average converted mana cost in this deck is comically low, which means we only have to run 21 lands. For non-basics, we've included three submerged boneyard as the only tap land, don't want too many of those. Then we have a pair of Ifner Deadlands for removal and early black sources, and two Field of Ruin to mess with our opponent's fixing, or their deserts, or any other land that we hear talks bad about Admiral Brass, gotta stick up for the old lady. Anyways, add in seven islands and seven swamps, and boom, 21 land mana base. Quick overview, then sideboarding, then upgrades. Blue Black Pirate Aggro slash Control whatever is a deck that utilizes all the power pirates have in Exelon. It's built exactly as it was meant to be built. You spend your first few turns dropping evasive pirates that your opponents will not want to use removal on, then you back them up with disruption, drop some pirate lieutenants and captains, and keep rolling in for the damage. On the back of a ton of evasion, disruption, card advantage, and removal, Blue Black Pirates is a deck to be reckoned with. It has the best of both worlds. The absurdly aggressive fleet captain in the same deck as the wonderfully controlling lookout dispersal. If you want to play a deck that has a strong sword and a strong shield, you've come to the right place. Aggro with resiliency delicious. If we're talking sideboard, black is a great sideboard color going into new standard. Everyone's talking about Carnage Tyrant, and let's be real, that dude's terrifying. So we have ways to deal with it. Doomfall is a pseudo-sacrifice effect, Trial of Ambition is an actual sacrifice effect, and if worse comes to worse, Buntu's Last Reckoning is an affordable board wipe in case we need something that drastic. Of course, for the sacrifice or exiling effects to work, we gotta kill everything else beforehand, but Carnage Tyrant is expensive. The goal is to just kill them before that monster drops. Trust me, white's the only color in standard with even halfway decent options for that thing. If we're talking non-Tyrant shenanigans, Gifted Aetherborn is a sick sideboard card against Mono Red, which will absolutely be a thing still. Liliana and Jace's defeat, good to have a couple copies of those preparing for the new format. Nimble Obstructionist, can't forget about that bird wizard, is quite good against any linchpin activated ability. I expect artifact shenanigans of many kinds, so being prepared is good. Sentinel Totem is the bee's knees for graveyard happenings. Spell Pierce is an excellent anti-control sideboard card. And finally, Duress, also pretty dang good at messing with control or anything spell-based. Moving along to upgrades, the base version of this deck is actually pretty strong and you're definitely going to have a ton of fun with it, but if you want to up your game a bit, I have suggestions. First, Fatal Push, get that bad boy in the main deck. Also for creatures, Metallic Mimic is a must-have. Buffing all your pirates? Can't say no to that. Now, for my favorite upgrades, remember Skyship Plunder? Oh yeah, I'm a big fan. Such a big fan, in fact, that I upgraded this deck with Walking Ballista and Jace Cunning Castaway. The Plunder ends up triggering way more than you think, and giving the Ballista counters, I don't have to explain to you how insane that is, but New Jace? You put a counter on New Jace, he's going to ultimate that much faster and start the copy train going. Once that starts, it's almost impossible possible to stop. And the Plunder keeps triggering, keeps granting counters. He's insane. Plunder is insane in the upgraded deck. It's just super funny. And lastly, Drowned Catacomb, Fetid Pools, easy land upgrades, but they had to be mentioned. Blue Black Pirates is a fun deck whether you build the budget version or the upgraded version. I suggest starting with the budget version and then if you enjoy attacking for a lot of damage while annoying your opponent beyond reason, absolutely start upgrading it. I had a ton of fun building and testing it, and I hope you have a ton of fun playing it. Remember, if you want to see the deck list in its entirety or get any of the cards for yourself at the best prices around, be sure to click the first link in the description. And with that said, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.